Let's start by saying that this is not a political video. I am only going to be showing the accomplishments of President Biden and former President Trump. I have actually fact-checked the information for this video through factcheck.org and that source will be listed in the description below. And also there are more than six areas of statistics for each president, but to shorten the video up, I went with these six. So now that that special disclaimer is out of the way, let's get started. Under former President Trump, the economy had a net loss of 2.9 million jobs. To be fair, the pandemic was a factor in the overall job losses during former President Trump's term. The U.S. had a steady continuation of job growth from the previous administration until the pandemic wiped out 22.4 million jobs. 56% of those jobs did return before former President Trump left office. However, former President Trump is still the only president since Herbert Hoover during the Great Depression to leave office with a net job loss. As President Biden runs for re-election, here's how the U.S. has fared during his time in office so far. The economy added 15.2 million jobs. The number is now nearly 6 million higher than before the pandemic. But, to be fair, some of the job growth is a bounce back from lost jobs during the pandemic. So just as those jobs wouldn't really count as lost jobs under Biden, they can't count as new jobs either. The U.S. economy added manufacturing jobs every month during Trump's first 18 months in office. But those job gains began to erode beginning in March of 2019, a year before the pandemic, and took a deep dive as the pandemic forced a wave of plant closings. Nearly 1.4 million manufacturing jobs were lost in March and April of 2020. When Trump left office, there were 154,000 fewer people employed in manufacturing than when he became president. During the presidential campaign, Biden promised he had a plan to create a million new manufacturing jobs, but that hasn't yet been achieved. As of March 2024, the U.S. added 768,000 manufacturing jobs during Biden's time, a 6.3% increase in the space of 38 months, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. But compared with the highest level during Trump's time in office, which was January 2019, manufacturing jobs are only up 128,000, or 1%. The unemployment rate was 4.7% when former President Trump took office and would continue to drop until the pandemic. A month before widespread lockdowns would virtually shut down the economy, the unemployment rate stood at 3.5% in February of 2020, the lowest since December 1969. During the pandemic, the unemployment rate peaked at 14.8% in April 2020, the highest since the Bureau of Labor Statistics began tracking the figures in 1948. When Trump's term ended in January 2021, the unemployment rate was 6.3%, which was 1.6 percentage points higher than when he took office. The unemployment rate has been lower for longer under Biden than under his predecessor. It hit the lowest point in over half a century in January 2023 and again in April of 2023 when it was 3.4% the lowest since June of 1969. This March also marked the 28th consecutive month that the rate was at or below 4%. The longest such stretch under Donald Trump was 24 months just before the pandemic set the unemployment rate soaring. The rate was 3.8% last month, down 2.6 percentage points since Biden took office. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic, the U.S. economy began slowing down. The real inflation-adjusted gross domestic product, 
went up in Trump's first two years, peaking at an estimated 2.9% in 2018, the highest since 2005. But the economy grew only 2.3% in 2019, and the bottom just fell out in 2020. As a candidate and president, Trump promised the nation's economy would grow on an annual basis by 4% to 6%, but in actuality, it never topped 3%. Under Biden, the real gross domestic product, which is adjusted for inflation, increased 5.8% in 2021, 1.9% in 2022, and 2.5% in 2023. In the first quarter of this year, the economy grew at an annual rate of 1.6%. The 1.6% first quarter estimate was far below expectations. A day earlier, the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta's GDP Now model was projecting growth of 2.7%. The Bureau of Economic Analysis said the first quarter figures reflected a slowdown in spending. Under Trump, after-tax corporate profits set new records in the first two years of his presidency, but declined slightly in 2019 and fell further still in 2020, when the pandemic forced businesses to close some permanently. Still, after-tax corporate profits were higher when Trump left office than when he arrived. Corporate profits hit a record $1.98 trillion in 2018, up from the previous record of $1.88 trillion set in 2017. Profits dipped in 2019 to $1.95 trillion and again in 2020 to $1.91 trillion. Despite the two-year decline, after-tax corporate profits were 8.5% higher than they were in 2016, the year before Trump's inauguration. After two record-setting years under Biden, after-tax corporate profits dipped slightly in 2023. For the year, after-tax corporate profits set records in 2021 and 2022, according to the Bureau of Economic Analysis estimates. The BEA estimated that profits in 2023 were $2.97 trillion, slightly lower than the $2.98 trillion in 2022. Still, it was 36% higher than in 2020, the year before Biden took office. So according to factcheck.org, the economy actually has not been tanked. Trump made no progress in erasing the debt, which the then presidential candidate once said he would probably do in eight years. Rather, the amount the federal government has borrowed from the public went up by 50% during Trump's time in office, from $14.4 trillion on the day he was inaugurated to $21.6 trillion the day his successor was sworn in. Likewise, the debt as a percentage of the economy also grew under Trump, rising from 76.2% of GDP in fiscal year 2016 to 101.1% of GDP in fiscal year 2020, according to figures from the Office of Management and Budget. Under Biden, the public debt, which excludes money the government owes itself, has increased to about $27.5 trillion. That is more than $5.8 trillion, or roughly 27% higher than the public debt was when Biden took office. So neither president reduced the national debt. So overall, the economy has performed better under Biden than under Trump. More jobs have been created. More manufacturing jobs have been brought back to the U.S. Unemployment has been lower. Economic growth has been higher. Corporate profits have been higher, and the federal deficit has been drastically reduced, and the growth of the national debt has been lower. President Biden has recently pressured Amazon, Walmart, Target, and Walgreens to lower prices, and if you look around, you can see the prices dropping rapidly. Because of this, corporate profits are going to drop. But since they rose so much higher during the pandemic, I suspect this is because 
the price gouging that corporations have been using long after the pandemic ended will stop. Corporate price gouging has masked the true amount of inflation that we have endured and has made many people suffer for no good reason. I hope this video gave you some insights into how the economy is doing. There are other aspects of the economy that would tilt one way or the other for either Trump or Biden, but that would make the video too long, and in the end, it wouldn't change the results. The economy is not perfect, but it also is not trashed either. The U.S. is still the number one economy in the world, and we are still the envy of the world. Until next time, take care and remember that your money matters.